Uh, I'm a mile away from my house, um, which just goes to show that um, ancient uh, archaeology is all around us. Um, even in a semi-urban um, landscape. Uh, I'm off to have a look at... Uh, I'm, I'm out here to get some exercise, according to the regulations. Uh, and while I'm at it, I'm going to have a look at a Roman road. Uh, it's a projected Roman road. Um, there's evidence that it's here. Um, uh, but it's a dotted line on, on the Ordnance Survey map. Uh, so let's uh, see what we can see. Uh, this is the hypothetical point where the uh, the Roman road comes um, crosses the railway path. Now the um, the railway path is a relic from an old form of technology. Uh, the Roman road is an old form of technology. Um, we only know this is the railway path. But it's completely obliterated. Um, we see the occasional pieces of paraphernalia which slowly rots away over the years. And you can say the same thing about um, the Roman past, how it's it probably faded away pretty quickly after um, after the uh, Roman army left um, in 410, um, uh, which is probably why many historians say the Anglo-Saxons came here to an empty landscape. It wasn't an empty landscape, but it was probably empty. Um, it was probably full of the ruins of, a, of, of a, an infrastructure that collapsed only quite recently. Um, but anyway, I thought I'd show you this. It's a nice little sculpture of um, Gaius Centius, whoever he is. Um, uh, and um, I'm about a mile and a half away from home now. Um, uh, there's not much else to do. Uh, but it's the same uh, hypothetical Roman road as the one I've showed you in previous um, videos. The one up in um, Hall's End, uh, Wick War. Uh, the settlement up there that's on this road uh, and the hypothetical temple I showed you a couple of weeks ago it probably isn't a temple that's also at the beginning of this road um, well I wanted to talk about collapse of civilization this uh, this railway here well beaching was it the 60s that's only 60 years ago uh, you know uh, such an important part of our um, infrastructure within living memory uh, it's all completely gone it's now a, a cycle path and a footpath uh, so it's all so those who think um, civilization uh, you know is, is difficult to abandon or get rid of then I mean we still got our civilization I mean our cars are, are as, as efficient as the railway is uh, it's not as sensible as ecological um, so we haven't gone well, some would argue we've gone backwards, but it is it is crucial to understand. I mean, a lot of people mocked when Concord we end we stopped building Concord. We did go backwards. Nobody can now travel to New York in two hours. Um, that was modernity, and now it's gone. So when people were were crying on the on the last flight of Concord, they were crying for modernity. So, um, what have you got against the Anglo-Saxons is something that uh, nobody's asked me. Um, uh, why are you pro-Roman and anti-Anglo-Saxon? Well, first of all, let's say what uh, the Anglo-Saxons did do for them. It wasn't all awful. Uh, they laid out, they gave us the English language. The Anglo-Saxon is Old English. Uh, and it's a pretty fine language. I, I'm enjoying speaking it now. Uh, so it was well with, you know, thank you, thank you Anglo-Saxons. Uh, they also laid out the English landscape as we know it today. It's roads, it's, uh, uh, it's villages, nearly all villages apart from industrial ones that came in the 19th century uh, and the eight, late 18th were set up by the Anglo-Saxons. There were some that were left over from the Roman period. Um, uh, there may have been a break uh, between when the um, could have been a break, um, uh, but most of all, I mean, if you look at Silchester, completely abandoned. It's just walls. It uh, it ceased to exist. It's the roads leading to it were no longer used and were lost. Whereas if you look at Bath, the roads leading up to it, the Foss, still used today. Nice straight line all the way up from Ilchester up to 
Leicester, I think, after that, uh, through Bath. Still, we still use it today. And Bath itself, still used after the Romans left. We know that because of the Battle of Deorum. Uh, so where it was mentioned in 577, there was a king of Bath. And um, not all of it went, but the vast, you know, 95% of it disappeared. And uh, the Anglo-Saxons laid it all out after that. So, uh, so yeah. Thank you to them for setting up the, our English villages and our language. Um, some laws uh, uh, are useful. Um, uh, some common law ideas. Are, uh, I haven't thought about this. I may be able to give it some more thought before I start dissing it. But anyway, yeah, that's, let's lay that, um, that one to bed. Um, what did the Romans give us? They gave us... A proper infrastructure, uh, local self, not necessarily self-government, but a measure of local government uh, that uh, address local needs, uh, fresh run, running water, uh, organised market investment, uh, investment in the landscape, uh, 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 under under floor heating, uh, a system where. Um, Yes, he did have slavery, but then so did the Anglo-Saxons. Uh, and a set of, set of laws that are easy to understand. Uh, and that, were, that are the basis of a lot of European laws today. Um, uh, they also had engineering. Um, the uh, transmission of ideas via the written word. And when the Anglo-Saxons came along, all of that just disappeared. Uh, the, English, the, uh, the Roman church uh, kept ideas and uh, knowledge alive until the re-establishment of uh, some sort of um, state uh, came along um, but up until then it was uh, uh, chaos uh, if you look at um, look at the culture of the Anglo-Saxons as well one saga after another uh, the Anglo-Saxon culture was part of a Scandinavian, Northern European culture, a shared culture, well understood. Be you know, people like Beowulf turn up in Danish sagas. Uh, it's full of uh, self-aggrandisement, uh, uh, gathering as much wealth and power as possible, uh, and uh, other disgusting ideas such as rape as a punishment, things like this was the Romans, uh, Mediterranean European culture had a system of uh, different philosophies and ideas that promoted communal well-being, uh, justice, ideas of justice that were universal. Uh, all right, they didn't actually get do it, um, but those ideas were there and promulgated even through the Christian church. Uh, so you get utter selfishness uh, an egotism from the Anglo-Saxons and some measure of public work, worth, the Commonwealth, all these sort of ideas from the Romans. So, yeah, so that's where I'm coming from on it. Uh, and it all came to an end. Um, uh, this uh, uh, part shows where the um, well the uh, Roman road crosses this field here um, uh, along a fence line a, a hedge line but on the other side here are some earthworks possibly uh, possibly Iron Age or um, uh, some other um, period
Uh, well, that's uh, a nice bit of exercise uh, and pretty interesting. Uh, those humps are quite enigmatic, uh, but they could be quite prosaic at the same time. Uh, could easily be a 18th century coal mine. There are others towards Puckle Church. Uh, could be anything really. Uh, could be an Iron Age um, farm. Uh, could be Roman. Could be just an old hamlet. Uh, so it could be interesting or could be not, but uh, it's a good reason to walk in this direction.